his mouth and my are they mouth. or are they not Americans? Far <laughs> left people who commit acts of <laughs> oh! Oh! Yeah, by the yes. way, under no circumstances is it appropriate to sick the United States military on American citizens, dog. What the f are you saying? No matter that you disagree with them. Uh let's do the Jake Tapper. Oh yeah. Let's do the Jake Tapper. Yes. Good to see you. Thank you so much. You Thank you. So um, let me ask you, obviously, uh, Trump's former chief of staff, General John Kelly, sure. um, was alarmed, he says, by what he heard when Trump said he wanted to use the National Guard or the Pentagon to go after. I'm all for hearing y'all sigh, but calling Trump a Nazi is a stretch. Why is it a stretch? Why is it a stretch? He, his goal is to create militarized border uh, camps, okay? Concentration camps. That's what he said. He falsely claims over and over again that there are 20 million undocumented citizens, undocumented migrants living on U.S. soil, and that he's going to deport every single one of them. That's straight Nazi. Mass deportation is straight Nazi. Like, I look at your chat. I say one thing and disagrees respectfully. Look at what your chat is saying to me. Stop crying about what the chat is saying to you. You're, you're talking to me directly now, okay? Don't, don't rush to be like, oh, I'm the victim here. Don't do that. Answer my question. Donald Trump has said that there are enemies within, that he is going to use the military and the police force to not a victim. Okay, why are you? behaving like one right now. Donald Trump has said that there are enemies within and that he will use the National Guard, the police, and the military against them. Okay? Does that not strike you as a, a little bit concerning in terms of rhetoric? Donald Trump falsely lies about undocumented immigrants in this country. Donald Trump also says that undocumented immigrants in this country are eating cats and dogs. He says Haitians are doing that. They're not doing that. He's lying about that. But then he also says they're killing hundreds of thousands of Americans every year. That's also a lie. That's completely false. The real number in the fiscal year of 2024 was 26. Okay. Is he talking about people here that are illegally? Yes. There's still people though. Don't you think they're still just human beings with lives, dreams that, that want the same thing that you want to put a roof over their heads, to have food on their table, to have clothes on their back. I agree, but come here without breaking the law. Okay. Great, great counter. So you also recognize that the difference between an undocumented migrant and a documented migrant is just paperwork. So why is it that J.D. Vance and Donald Trump have simultaneously claimed that the documented migrants on U.S. soil, like the Haitians that he's pointing to in Springfield, Ohio, that are here on temporary protected status, which is the paperwork necessary, which has prior authorization and a background check that comes along with it. Why are they calling them illegal aliens when they're not here illegally, when they are here literally legally tps is legal paperwork necessary why are they saying that they are also illegal aliens and that they are going to deport them if that is the case if they are here legally then i don't agree with that okay but doesn't that concern you once again does that not concern you he says that these jd vance and donald trump both have falsely claimed that uh immigrants here with temporary protective status that have the legal paperwork necessary to be able to live exist and also work on U.S. soil are actually still illegal aliens, okay? He wants to revoke their legal status. And he's also simultaneously lying about uh, the crimes that they're committing. No one asks if you don't agree this is about Trump being Nazi. Exactly. If it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Donald Trump is straight up a fascist, okay? He is. I do not care if he genuinely ideologically is committed to a fascist project but it doesn't change the dynamic for me at all because he is actively actively promoting fascist rhetoric his policies are identical to fascist policies that's it he has also used famous fascist quotes over and over again the enemy within americans with whom he disagrees including the pelosi's adam schiff and then he gave an interview. He said that Trump, quote, certainly falls into the general definition of fascist, that he is, quote, certainly an authoritarian, admires people who are dictators. You've called him a disgruntled former employee. Um, but why shouldn't Americans out there listen to somebody who worked closely with Trump, worked with him longer than you've worked with him, uh, retired four-star Marine general, served his country honorably, uh, who is conservative, who says he agrees with Trump on most policies, but is worried about this aspect of Trump. So let me just say two things in response. So first of all, a lot of what John Kelly- Fascism is paleogenetic uh, ultranationalism. It's an in-group, out-group dynamic through some intractable, unchangeable quality. 
That's what fascism is. It's a, that's the, that's the most basic way to describe it. Okay. Google is also very helpful. If you would like to figure out what fascism is, it's ironic that Jake Tapper is having this interview with a person who also called Trump a Nazi. <laughs> so there's that too. Donald Trump's own vice presidential candidate side by side, not that many years ago, called him a Nazi. Okay. He called him a fascist too. The, pretty much all of what John Kelly accuses Donald Trump of saying. There were other people in the room, Mike Pence's former chief. He called him America's Hitler, to be exact. His staff, for example, who've explicitly said Donald Trump never said those things, right? So one on Mike the Pence, specific the guy comments. Who's not going to support Trump because Mike, he, Mike Pence, Mike Pence's former chief of staff uh, said that Donald Trump didn't say those things, uh -huh. right? So that's number one. Number two, oh, yeah. I actually think there's a, there's an interesting conversation here to have, Jake, which is why does John Kelly not support Donald Trump? It's about policy. It's no, actually no. not about personality. He says he agrees with Trump on most policy. No. He agrees with Trump on most policy. He disagrees with, with Trump on but, uh, how Trump views his role and, his, uh, and the fascism and the authoritarianism. I, I, don't, I don't buy that, Jake. I don't buy that. Because if you actually look <laughs> at John Kelly, at folks like Liz Cheney, the fundamental disagreement they have with Donald Trump is even though they say that they're no, conservative, a, they're conservative in the sense that they want America to get involved in a ton of ridiculous military conflicts. They want America to police the world, and Donald Trump wasn't. John and Kelly lost a son policy, in Afghanistan. I, I, why are you saying that he, like, I, I've never heard John Kelly say, whether oh, Jake, he supports of Iran his, or his, Afghanistan. And, and, I, and I honor his son's sacrifice and I honor his family's sacrifice. That doesn't mean he's not wrong about policy. Do but people, what do what people specifically have, are you talking about? What has he said? Is, that, is your argument that a person yeah, who Jake. lost a son in Afghanistan can't be wrong about public policy? I'm asking then you. Then why no. bring that up? Let's talk uh, about public policy because, you because were I've asking, never criticized his service or I his I brought it up service. because you're acting as if he is pro-war, and I've never heard him say whether or not he supported the war in Afghanistan or the war in Iraq. He was a general carrying out because orders. Because I know John Kelly's worldview, and I know the people who have attacked Donald Trump the most vociferously on foreign policy. They'll say, what? well, he's a dictator, when what they really mean is they won't listen. He w Donald Trump wouldn't listen to the leadership of the military when they wanted him to start ridiculous conflicts. That is a consistent theme. And I think that there's a big, big thing going on in American politics. It's a very interesting theme in American foreign policy where a lot of former members of the Pentagon bureaucracy, a lot of old neoconservatives, they have a fundamental difference with Donald Trump on the question of peace and war. I believe Donald Trump is the candidate of peace. I think the record supports that. But the reason these guys go after him so vociferously, I don't think that it's about his personality, Jake. I think that it's about they don't like that Donald Trump said. Didn't he kill another country's general like in who was it? Soleimani or whatever the hell was it? No, when a lot of them wanted to start a ridiculous like, war. Well, for, you're you're in a, a did, did he where, where did he conduct that strike in Iran? <laughs> in world views. Yeah. I think based on gut, I can't really tell what, where you're coming from on it. There's no well, evidence. Based on people that I've talked to in the Trump administration sure, John about Bolton, what John sure. Kelly wanted to do, John Bolton, Liz Cheney, these, these people have a consistent... John Kelly view. was at the Department of Homeland Security, and then he was chief of staff. He was not weighing in. I, I don't even know what you're talking about, but let me ask you something about John <laughs> Kelly specifically, because you said the other day, quote, I guarantee John Kelly talked to somebody on Kamala Harris's campaign beforehand, before he did this interview. Now, I've spoken with people in John Kelly's circle, and I've spoken with oh, people in the so Kamala good. Harris campaign. I can't even They say there's been no so communication the entire time. So where did that come from? Oh, I'm highly skeptical of that, Jake. You know the way that these attacks work. You know the way that these people are often vetted so, by a campaign. So you made it up. Or something goes out there. No, I said that the American media... I love when they remember what their jobs are as journalists, like especially Jake Tapper is like one of the worst offenders of theirs. <laughs> like he never has this kind of... The only... They only remember what their job is in terms of like being adversarial to people in positions of power at the very last moment. The, the smoke that Jay has towards J.D. Vance here, I only see when he's like Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, Bernie Sanders and the like. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I wish he would do this more frequently for people in positions of power. And the American Democratic Party apparatus works a certain way. If it comes out that John Kelly never even spoke with a person in the Kamala Harris I'm telling orbit, you that. then I'm happy. You, you're telling me that based on secondhand conversations with John Kelly, and it's what? interesting. <laughs> We've now spent, Jake, three minutes talking about John Kelly. If it is true that he never spoke with anyone in Kamala what Harris the orbit, Who the I else is he supposed to ask? Bro, this is, Kaya, please. This is the longest way to say fake news. Yeah. Like, this is J.D. Vance's, <laughs> like, best uh, 
role, I think, is to basically, because he's like a, a TED Talk guy, because he comes from like a liberal circuit, Kaya, please. Um, that it's basically like his job here is to um, make Trumpian rhetoric liberal coded. Like uh -huh. that's what his job is. Uh -huh. And he normally has a, a, a better he normally has a better time doing this. Like mm -hmm. when he did the New York times interview that made me f so mad that you didn't listen to, um, yeah. <laughs> a while back. How do you know I didn't listen to that? Because I told you to listen to it and I know you didn't. And I asked you if you listened to it and you said, no, I, I was probably on an interview with MSNBC or something. Oh yeah. No, totally. You're too busy. <laughs> yeah. Damn. It's not here yet. Um, anyway, happy to apologize. But I'm glad that Jake is not letting him get away with it this time. To John Kelly for misstating how he delivered this news to the Atlantic magazine. But let's talk about who, who did he deliver this news to? To Jeffrey Goldberg, a guy who lied the United States into the Iraq war, which led to the deaths of millions of innocent Arabs and thousands of innocent Americans. You don't go to that guy if you don't have a particular ideological motive. I think that's what's going on. If I'm wrong, I'm happy to say that I'm wrong. Bold I think it's interesting that you shit. think that a, that a magazine writer lied to the American people into war. Well, he encouraged it. He wrote stories that- Okay, this is the part that I do despise because J.D. Vance, I can't believe I'm saying this, is right. I just hate that like, um, he's right on this issue and it's like very Sorry, my, uh, my food's here. He's right on this issue and it's really annoying that like, um, you know, Jake Tapper's like, oh, I find it weird that you're saying that this person lied to the American public. Like they did. Okay. They did. And it's disgusting that like, it's disgusting that he is trying to, uh, uh, present all of this as like, oh, these guys just want to do more wars and we're the anti-war ticket. And that's why they're coming after us with these like lies. Like you can say that about John Kelly as well, by the way. He's not wrong about John Kelly being a, a warmongering piece of shit too. Two things can be the same, correct at the same time. John Kelly is a warmongering piece of shit, okay? And that, uh, uh, and that uh, Goldberg is not exactly a great person either. Having said that, their coverage probably stands true. Like I, I, I have no reason to believe that John Kelly's lying uh, uh, when he says that, like Donald Trump has said that I want my generals to be like Adolf Hitler's generals. It's also stupid enough to be so Trumpian because you know Adolf Hitler's generals famously one lost, two tried to kill him in the process multiple times. So it's like a very funny, stupid thing for Donald Trump to hold on to, to be like, I want them to be like Adolf Hitler's generals, not knowing what the truth is. That were dishonest. He, he took, wrote a story about the gassing of the Kurds in the, in, in, uh, I forget if it was the Atlantic or the New Yorker, but I'm actually he, referring he, to John Kelly talking to the New York Times. He, he wrote stories, by the way, where he took what intelligence officials in the American Pentagon bureaucracy said and wrote it as the gospel truth. And this highlights the entire point that I'm making about Trump's foreign policy, is this is a guy who wants to use American troops sparingly. He wants peace through strength. It's why his foreign policy was so successful during his first term. It's all the same people who were wrong about Iraq. They were wrong about the quagmire in Afghanistan. They were wrong about Syria. They were wrong about everything. And now they're coming after Donald Trump because he actually has a realistic and Wait, cautious- Wait, Syria? The Republican position on Syria is that they didn't do Iraq and Afghanistan. The Republican position on Afghanistan and Iraq is that uh, the, the, wait, wait, Kaya, place. What are you doing? <laughs> this is new shit. She's behaving brand new today. It's kind of annoying. I love that emo, that bit, that, that emoji is awesome. That Which emo, one? The oh, emo. the place one? Yeah, that's awesome. She's acting brand new. Um, do, do they forget a Republican put us all in all three of those places that too, but like post Trump, post Trump, 2016, post Trump, 2016, Republicans are now anti Iraq war. They're anti Afghanistan war. As a matter of fact, the issue, however, uh, the issue, however, is that like in terms of Syria, their argument for Syria was the exact opposite that they were saying Obama wasn't like enforcing a red line. And wasn't bombing Syria hard enough. That's the problem here. So it, it doesn't even make sense. Just foreign policy. I'm talking about people who worked for Donald Trump in his first administration. That's sure. what I'm talking about. I'm talking about not just John Kelly, 
but Mark Milley, who was the Trump appointed chairman of his joint of the Joint Chiefs of who Staff, who disobeyed Trump's direct orders on troop redeployments in Syria. And I'm talking about the guy that that had your a job. Massive, a massive, massive violation of his constitutional oath. By the I'm way, I'm talking about the guy that had your job before Donald Trump's uh, supportive crowd wanted to hang him. Uh, Vice <laughs> President Mike Pence awesome. who said, as you know, that Trump put the, himself before the Constitution. I'm talking about General <laughs> Mattis, also Secretary of Defense in Mad Trump's dog. administration. I'm talking about Mark Esper, the Secretary of Defense, who told me that Trump does have fascistic tendencies. John Bolton, H.R. McMaster, single one Alyssa okay, Farrah Griffin. Okay, Jake, These are, are Trump you going to listen officials? to every Trump administration official? You know one reason why Kamala Harris doesn't have as many people criticizing her is because she doesn't fire people who fail. That's why we haven't had a real audit of the disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal is because Kamala Harris protects failures in government. Donald Trump fires them. And I'd much rather have the president who fires people who screw up. Now, Jake, uh, no, 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 this is an important point. Fire Mike Kamala Pence. Harris. You did not fire Mike Pence. Ka Kamala Harris. He did not fire the president. Mark Milley. Kamala Harris. He did not the fire uh, General, uh, I mean, uh, John. He fired a lot of those people, Jake, and he did because they weren't doing their job. But this is the thing, Jake. We've we've now spent yeah. five minutes yeah. talking about <laughs> on, people and Donald Jay. Trump's staff who think he's not fit for who office. Who he fired? Who we think? Who, who think he's fired. not fit for office? Oh, they didn't think he was unfit for office until they had a falling out with him because he fired them. And we're not talking about the public policy. Well, Why, we're, we're actually we talk about how Americans can't afford groceries. We're actually Jake? we're actually can we talking talk about, about the fact that Americans can't afford the cost of housing. We're actually can talking we talk about, about the fact that a lot of people out there in mm -hmm. Erie, Pennsylvania, they're the ones who suffer and die when people like Mark Esper and Mark Milley don't obey the commander in chief's orders. We're talking orders. about Donald Trump and what he says. Yes. And Donald much, Trump says. And you'd much rather that, talk about what Donald Trump allegedly said I'm about than what, what Donald Trump publicly. did in office. I'm talking about what, what he, he did publicly. in office, Jake, What he said publicly. 1.5% wants to use the military to go after the enemy within, which is the American people. He did not say that, Jake. The enemy he within? said that he was going to send the military Jake. after the American people. Show me the quote where he, he said, said he was going to. He said the, Amer the enemy within. He said far left lunatics. He's talking like about the people Pelosi's rioting and shit. He's talking about people <laughs> rioting after the election. I think the Pelosi's we were rioting after the election. He said, you're, "Adam you're, Schiff you're was rioting after the separate, election." You're using two separate phrases. He said about using the military that far-left lunatics, people who riot in the wake of an election, people who burned down American cities in the summer of 2020, yes, we should have a federal law enforcement This is response. what he said to Joe Rogan on Friday. The enemy within that he wants the military to go after. No, he, no this the is enemy the enemy within, you, a you bigger impute, problem than Kim Jong-un. the second part. We have, to, we have people that are really bad people that I really think want to make this country unsuccessful. That's who the enemy and, within. And did he say that he wants to use the military against those people? He Here, said he here's wants the to game. Use the military to go after the enemy within. Here's the game that you're playing. Oh my he God. said that he, playing a no, game. no, no. Let me. Can I answer the question, please? He said that he wanted to use the military to go after far left lunatics who are rioting, and he also called he them. Say. He also called them the enemy within. He separately, in a totally different context, in a totally different conversation, said that Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff were threats to this country. Were the enemy he within. Never were said. the enemy within. He, he said they were the enemy. So he every did. time he uses the exact same phrase, we assume that he used I don't know. I don't throw around what? the term what of enemy within. Of using the well, military against Oh my God, as the vice gymnastics president, you but you won't let me answer the question. I'm telling yes. you that Donald Trump has said, and I agree with him, that we should use the U.S. military to, to go, go after, after Americans. people who riot, who burn down our cities. And this was what John Kelly was. The National this, Guard. this was what John Kelly was alarmed by: the idea of using the U.S. military to go after Americans. He's That's not, what he said. Donald Trump never said Americans writ large. You keep on putting words in his mouth and Are they mouth. or are they not Americans? Far <laughs> left people who commit acts of violence, who riot. And now you're doing care. a very oh! oh! Yeah, by the yes. way, un are you out? Under no circumstances is it appropriate to stick the United States military on American citizens, dog. What the are you saying? No matter that you disagree with them. Oh man, well. These are bad American citizens. I just like disagree with them. So I think we should be able to kill them with the military is an insane argument. And, and optically speaking, he can try to liberalize his speech here. But what he's saying is fascist nonsense.
narrow definition of what he said, which is I not what he care. said. That's not what he said. But let he me ask did. you, let no, me ask no, you the bigger question. He did say that, Jake. He did. He said that he wanted to use the U.S. military. Let me clarify. To go after far-left lunatics, to, yes. To, and then he also added... people rioting and looting. And he added, never said... He added he Schiff. Never said, and then he added the Pelosi. He never he And then said he added people that don't want that the country Adam to succeed. Schiff, he said that Adam Schiff and Nancy Pelosi, he used in a separate context, in a separate conversation. And what you're doing is you're smashing Fo two Fox totally different conversations. Fox asked him about this last week and he didn't take issue with it he said the enemy within is the biggest is the biggest threat to this country but did he say the country. enemy within that he's going to use the military against Nancy Pelosi Donald Trump offered Nancy Pelosi the national guard on January the 6th and according to private oh, emails boy. she rejected it so let's let's oh, talk boy. about things that he <laughs> wants to do that are feeding into this concern that people like John Kelly and uh General Mattis and uh General um uh, Milley have he said on Friday Special Counsel Jack Smith should get thrown out of the country. He's threatened to arrest election officials who cheated. We know that he believes a lot of people cheated that did not. He's about to be like, well, Jack Kelly, um, um, or John, jo what was it? Jack, Jack Smith. Kelly. Well, Jack Smith lives in the Netherlands. That's what he means. Like, he just has an answer for everything. It's so marmy and annoying. I hate him so much. Not cheat. He yes, wants if to you put, violate the law, you should be arrested. Yes. Uh, no one disagrees with that, but he's talking Apparently about Apparently you do, based on the no, way you're asking I'm the not, question. Ba no, based on the fact that he's accused people that didn't break the law of breaking the law when it comes to the election. And I'm, if you want to revisit that, I'm happy to. But Liz Cheney <laughs> said yeah, should be put before ass. a war tribunal. Oh. That yeah. sounds fascist to, to you at all? No, of course it doesn't. Of Putting course, Liz it before a military tribunal. First of all, I don't buy into the premise of what you're saying, Jake, because I just he said. On, on things that These I know that he said. said, on things that he's I know that he tape. said, you're imputing things, you're taking no, words out of context, not. you're taking two separate conversations and pretending no, that not. they were made at the exact he's same not. time. So I'm he's rejecting the premise. Question: I frankly don't believe what you're saying about Donald Trump's words. If you'd like to put up a clip and actually put him in context, I think the American people would realize that Donald Trump is a hell Donald of a lot Trump more reasonable than people like Liz Cheney who would like to lie us in the people have to come out war. and say he didn't mean that. No. Constantly. Over and over again. When it gets, oh, he didn't mean that. He actually no, no, that's, meant this. That's, when it gets to the most indefensible aspects of it, then they say, oh, you can't trust John Trump. I mean, you yeah, can, yeah, he, yeah, he says a lot of stuff. Uh, you yeah. Know. yeah exactly. Now, Dick, we also have to remember, I mean, step back a little bit. Well, ask, ask yourself a basic question about mm. network integrity. You guys talked about the Russia hoax nonstop. The FBI was investigating talked, it. The FBI talked, was investigating it, and we, so, we, so we covered them. And so you took the words of unnamed FBI agents and put them on your network as if they were the gospel truth. You did it again and again. A viewer of your network would have believed that Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin conspired in 2016. No. That was totally and preposterously false. No. Well, that's, what you just that's said why. is false. We covered an FBI investigation. I don't know why you want to talk about the FBI investigation. You covered it in a way that gave credence to anonymous <gasps> sources, accusations. You did it yourself. Your network did it, Jake. But again, can we talk about the issues that Americans care most about? I'm talking about? about things that Donald Trump has said. Yes. If you have an, an issue Kamala with Harris, whether or not he's talking about the economy enough, that's between you and your running mate. I'm Woo. talking about things he has said this week. Every single <laughs> rally that he does, he talks about how he wants to unleash American energy so we can lo lower the cost of groceries. He talks about the fact that housing has become <laughs> unaffordable. He talks about the wide open border, Jake. Kamala Harris and her allies, you know, it's interesting. Kamala Harris and her media allies, and I would put CNN in this category. You oh, guys, they would. You guys seem I'll to tell, care. I'll tell you that they wouldn't. Well, they should watch your network more because you guys seem to care more about Donald Trump's past than the future of the American people. We're running this campaign on making of the American dream. I'm specifically affordable. asking about how Donald Trump is going to be president in the future should he win, and then we're being told we're- He's gonna pursue economic policies that lower the cost of groceries and make life more affordable again. He talks about it every single day on the campaign trail, and so do I. What you're talking about is is a, an anonymously sourced story, or one guy- Nothing who anonymously a, sourced, or who zero one guy, One guy who is a disgruntled employee- I told where you, five ten, other ten people, people. Five other people. people pushed back against him and said that what he <laughs> He said was dishonest so why don't we talk about the policy that's affecting american citizens and not what donald trump allegedly said according to one guy who's pissed off because he got fired by donald trump i didn't bring up any of the things that he said he said i didn't bring up brought up john Kelly. them it's just this amorphous i know many of them it's just this amorphous group of people but they're smart and they're vicious 
Trump, we need to defeat our opponents. They're the enemy within. Supporters, he means illegal immigration and woke stuff. Trump, I want to be clear that Democrats, former staff, the media, and half of America are enemies we must put down. Supporters, <laughs> he so means true. taxes. I know many of them. It's just this amorphous group of people. This is from the Madison Square Garden rally from like last yesterday. night. But they're smart and they're vicious. And we have to defeat them. And when I say the enemy from within, the other side goes crazy becomes a sound of, oh, how can he say? No, they've done very bad things to this country. They are indeed the enemy from within. And, <laughs> but this is who we're fighting. I know many of them. It's just this amorphous group of people. <laughs> oh, my God. He's like, I mean, Nancy Pelosi. They try to correct me. He's like, he's like I mean, Nancy Pelosi. We must use the military on Nancy Pelosi. We must use the military on Adam I'm a fascist. Hitler. And then J.D. Vance is like, uh, actually, when he said he loves Adolf Hitler, he was actually talking about a different Adolf Hitler. It's like <laughs> Glenn Garrett was one of the uh, local posters that nailed the 2022 election in Michigan. He had Whitmer up by nine at the same time with the posters blinked and started showing her within the MOE <clears throat> or down margin of error or down. Glenn Gariff's last poll of Michigan shows Harris at 46.7%, Trump at 43.7%. Not going to, you know, not going to say anything here. However, uh, in the early vote of all the swing states, Harris seems to be performing pretty well in Michigan, even relative to 2020 at this point in the campaign. I'm just stating facts. You can call, call me, call out the cope all you want. I'm not saying it doesn't mean anything. It, it means something. It doesn't mean that she's going to win, but I'm just saying objectively what is true you you disagree because look you're not look go look into it then and come back to me and it is surprising given what we've you know it, it is surprising to me yeah because of the, the gaza because yes, of the gaza it, policy it is yeah it is surprising to me it's not based on polls it's either. not it's not that surprising dude donald trump is running a, such a bad campaign like this month own advisors i'm almost certain of it and i can tell you why because he, he he's a motor mouth okay he yaps way too much. And he openly will say at his rallies, they tell me to talk about the economy, but I'm here to talk about the migrants. So I'm here to tell you about the migrants and the trans people instead. I think that that's it. His advisors are like, Mr. President, please just talk about the economy. It's your strongest, uh, it's your strongest issue. Please, Mr. President, talk about the economy. He's like, no, I would talk about the, the transnational migrants. You know why he does that is because he knows his base loves him when he doesn't do what people tell him to do. I know, but that's then he openly admits. Well, I know it's bad, but that's what he loves. He loves the crowd and he loves to juice up the crowd and the crowd loves when he goes off script and he goes after and does everything that nobody wants him to do. They love that. And he knows it. And he can't help himself. He wants to do everything that they tell him not to do. The problem is that reveals to me, at least that there are at least somewhat smart individuals in his, in his corner that are telling him to stick to issues that actually help. Mm hmm. And he can't stop himself because he's a bad campaigner. Well, he is in many ways running to the opposite direction in terms of like good things that he was doing in 2016, presenting himself as a moderate versus now where he's just like so deeply unhinged. And also on top of that, he did January 6th and Roe v. Wade. It's just bad. It's just really, really bad campaigning. Oh, it's terrible. But there's nothing more than a live crowd loves is that when you defy the big guy that's in charge, the no fun guy, right? Like, I mean, I've done a lot, you know, nothing like what Trump has done in terms of live audiences, but like when you're in on stage in front of people and you're like, we're going to, they tell us we need to shut the show down, but we're going to keep going. And what are they going to do to stop us? You know, the live audiences love that. So this idea that Trump is like middle finger to the guy telling him what to do, people love it. And he knows it. And, and, uh, it's, but it's not it's not good a good campaign strategy, but he just can't help himself. That's what I'm saying. Kelly, and that I just described. I brought up perfectly. John Kelly's uh, view of Donald Trump. I didn't bring up John Kelly talking about what Donald Trump said about Hitler's generals. I didn't bring that up. I talked about John Kelly's view of Trump based on something Trump has been saying in the last week. So that's what I asked about. So John Kelly makes accusations that are rejected by five people. You you, you again, you're talking I about think something that, I, I didn't bring up. I think that maybe implicates <laughs> his overall judgment. And I think the fact that he has a worldview that's so oppositional to peace and prosperity suggests that he's not an honest arbiter here. This is not a guy, John Kelly. Yeah, peace and prosperity by f 
Sicking the U.S. military on Americans. I love the peace and prosperity party. Going to brag to Jeffrey Goldberg, who is interested in the American truth or is interested in telling an honest account of Donald Trump. He's a guy with an ax to grind because Donald Trump fired him and disagreed with him on policy. So all those 10 people, including the former vice president, uh, Mike Pence, all of these people are have this horribly damaged worldview, and they're all just going after Donald Trump because they want to send people into war? That's what. That's really your argument? Absolutely. It's not like these are Absolutely conservative. Absolutely, that's my these argument. These are not conservative Jake, Republicans. These, people, these aren't conservative these Republicans people, who are Jake. concerned about Donald Trump. All of, these, not. That's all not of right. these. All of these people, Jake, they came into office thinking that they could control Donald Trump. That when he said he wanted peace in the Mike world, Pence thought he could he, control Donald yes, Trump. Yes, he did. And when he found out, <laughs> really, that he, when he found out that he couldn't, they all turned on Donald Trump, and a lot of them got fired. And okay. we're running, and we're trying to staff the government with people who are going to govern according hmm. to principles of peace and. Pro I'm not going to lie to you. When you said Jake Tapper cooked them, I thought it was going to go in a different direction. I think JD Vance has gotten slimier and slimier, but like. This type of conversation plays well to his base. Like, he didn't show emotion at all. And also on top of that, something that you have to notice. Anytime there's an attack on Donald Trump, J.D. Vance finds one of the massive markers that he can always point to and lie about to say they're attacking Trump because Trump is a peaceful dove. Now, you and I already know that that's not the case. Mm. But this, like... Like, this will play super well to not only the base, but even to independents. Because he is so good at being this sociopathic worm that he can just turn around and say, what are you talking about? John Kelly, never seen a war he doesn't like. He wants to do permanent war. And that's the reason why he's coming after Trump like this, because Trump is a peaceful dove, is a perfect way to reframe the conversation calmly uh, towards something that you want to present trump as it would be like if donald trump was running on it would be like donald if donald trump was running on like i don't know protecting social security right and every anytime someone said something about him jd vance flipped the conversation back to this is because uh i don't know kamala harris has tried to undermine social security and that's the reason why they're lying about him because they don't want donald trump to protect social security so I think he did a he did a pretty decent job at deflecting. Uh, even though J, uh, even though Jake Tapper was on the attack the entire time, he does this all the time. By the way, he's so he's gotten a lot better at this. Um, from our like the way that we view it, of course we're gonna think JD Vance sucks. I think JD Vance sucks. I hate him. He's disgusting and he's lying the entire time. But I try to always look at this stuff from the perspective of like someone who is maybe like lib coded, but kind of conservative. They would be like, well, you know, in spite of all the attacks that Jake Tapper put to forward, it does seem like it does seem like J.D. Vance like holds himself well. And I know that there are people in this chat who have parents who would watch that interview, watch this interview and basically say that. But yeah, this is Pete Buttigieg. Yes, he is. This is. Pete Buttigieg, but for the Republican Party. Prosperity. Let me ask you. They're pissed off about it. Let me ask you because we're being told that we're over. Yeah. One more question because yep. we have to go to the yep. rally. You are running to be vice president of the United States. Of course. And there is a 50-50 chance, maybe better. I don't know, that, it, you're, that you're going <laughs> to succeed. Are you running to be vice president of the United States or are you running to be vice president of the red states? Because if you win, and there's a decent chance you will, you're going to be vice president of childless cat ladies. You're going to be vice president of legal Haitian, Haitian migrants in Springfield, Ohio. You're gonna be their vice president too. Are you running to do that? Jake, of course I'm running to be the oh, vice president of all question. Americans. I'm what running because say? I want no? people to be able to afford a good life in this country. You know how I grew up. You no, know I'm that not I grew up in a family people. where people what is he supposed I want to whether say? you're in a blue state or a red state, whether you're gonna vote Such for Trump or you're question. gonna vote for Harris, I want you to be able to have a good life in this country. I didn't actually watch the whole interview. Like my dad but. thinks there's an immigrant problem, but my mom is literally an immigrant from Brazil. <laughs> Bro, there's people in the chat whose parents are undocumented migrants and, and they have like immediate family members who are pro-Trump specifically because they want to do mass deportations. There's a chatter here that told me their dad is an undocumented migrant and if he had the capacity to vote, he would vote for Donald Trump. Like that's insane. One year ago? Oh my God. There's no way this was just one year ago. 
That's what she looked like one year ago. Look at this. God damn. Holy shit. That's got to be Little Bubba. Little baby. Oh my God. Is that Santa? Are you bringing him out this year too? Nah, ethnic Santa's gone. Remember what happened? We, I sold him on an auction. You did? Yeah, we did a... <laughs> oh, the charity. We did a charity auction. Yeah, we did it for uh, for Sea Dog. I might get a new ethnic Santa, though. I, it's, it's tradition. <laughs> what? Never mind. It's not... Wait, never mind. Oh, yeah. Auction at the IDF. What's not going to happen with the broken leadership in Washington, D.C.? Let me give you a statistic, Jake, because here is what the leadership of people like Kamala Harris and Nancy Pelosi and, yes, Mike Pence over 30 years in this country has led to. A person with a bachelor's degree lives seven years longer than a person without a bachelor's degree. There are a lot of people who have gotten rich and powerful off, off of American decline. Some of them have you had R's next to their name. Some of them have had D's next to their name. And the first person who I believe is really putting the interest of the American people first is Donald J. Trump. Oh. So, yes, we're going to be the president and the vice president. People, billionaire. The only way to do that is to reject You can't the become a consensus. billionaire without stepping on right. somebody Thanks, or a lot of people. I think there's nothing crazier than lying like this. Donald Trump is the funniest person to say this about. He's just like so obviously not interested in anyone but himself. And it's crazy <laughs> that that like this is the, the message that they go forward with and people eat it up. They say this guy who was born with a silver spoon that shits on a goddamn golden toilet that has bankrupted his father's businesses six times is like a smart, sound businessman who cares about the American working class. Uh, like, th there's just, it's the exact opposite of reality. The way I see it, if you can get people to believe that, like, I mean, yeah, people say he's Christian, that he, like, promotes the Christian faith. Like, there is nothing, <laughs> it's just so stupid. He is so openly antagonistic to, to, and in direct contradiction of like everything that they present him as. I always try to get my dad to admit that people maybe just don't like Donald Trump and that he's maybe just objectively bad. There's always some other thing, like a personal grievance or that they actually, um, or that they're the bad ones themselves because it all flows in the belief that Trump is de facto good and perfectly likable in a vacuum without lying media, for example, as wild how blind Trump supporters are to genuine critique. The things that they promote Trump on, it's not like they promote Trump on like boundaries that that you could maybe argue on. They're not like Donald Trump's buildings are pretty like, or some shit like that. You know what I mean? He has a great eye for aesthetics or some. It's always like things that he is directly the opposite of every day of his life. When people say Trump understands the working class, I'm like, how are you saying this? <coughs> like how, how, how can you say that? It just doesn't make any sense. It's like one of those things about Donald Trump that is like immediately discredited with, Three seconds of thinking.